The uh, purpose of this video is to give a demonstration on how to check your range of operation of your exhaust valve. Um, normally the exhaust valve has a range of operation from 225 to 230 degrees of flywheel uh, circumference. So 225 to 230 degrees of that flywheel turning is where the exhaust valve should open and close. Um, I get this information from this book that was written uh, by Fred Jones. It's Farm Gas Engines and Tractors. Uh, really a great book if you want a great understanding of internal combustion, uh, valves, ignition, uh, you name it. It really pertains to uh, old tractors, hit and miss engines, stationary engines, throttle governed. Um, really a great book. I, I've been reading it a lot. He has some great information in here. Uh, for those of you who might be trying to learn the principles of operation of these engines, you're starting into the hobby or something, this is a great book to see if you can find. But uh, he's a, uh, a professor of agricultural engineering, agricultural mechanical college of Texas and the American Society of Agricultural Engineers. So uh, very good, very good book to read. Uh, great information. But in here he talks about using, I guess back in the older days, they used what they call is a tram. And I made one here. It's just a uh, brass rod that you bend at both ends. Uh, he stated in this book, it could be anywhere from 15 to 30 to, uh, inches long. Uh, this one, I believe, is 30 inches long. I made it longer for, you know, to where I could use this on larger engines, smaller engines. Um, but I'm going to give a demonstration on how he shows in his book how to check the range of operation of your exhaust valve using a tram. Uh, he states that it's very important for exhaust valve operation on these smaller engines, hit and miss, throttle governed. Uh, the range of operation of the exhaust valve is really important. Um, supposedly, if you get the range of operation of your exhaust valve correct, then you're more likely to have your ignition timing correct also. Um, but I wanna, I wanna kind of go into this, what he talks about. Uh, I find it very interesting. Uh, and that's the only reason why I'm doing the video. But um, what he's doing is you're actually taking this tram and you're placing it on the point somewhere on the hopper. You know, you have to put it somewhere on the hopper. It doesn't matter where, you go here, here, here. But you wanna make sure that wherever you place it on the hopper or anywhere on the engine, that you're able to reach the flywheel. You see, I got it on the flywheel here. So uh, what he states is in the book is first, you want to measure the size of your flywheel. So you take a, I took a string and I went around the flywheel, brought the two together About the two together, as you can see here, all the way around the circumference of the flywheel. Uh, then you measure the length of the string. The length of this string is 55 inches. So what you do is you take that, in order to find out how many degrees per inch you have on your flywheel, which you gotta figure out first, you're gonna take that 55 inches that you have here, and you're gonna divide that by 360. When you do the math on that, you come out with 0 0.15. So for every one inch here on the flywheel is 15 degrees for a total of 360 degrees. So every inch is 15 degrees. Now what you wanna do with the tram is you want to find a spot, like I said, on your hopper somewhere. And first thing that you want to do is you want to find out to 
turn the flywheel where your exhaust valve is starting to open. Right when that rod coming off your cam, once when it starts touching your rocker arm on the exhaust valve, you want to stop right there, right as it's touching, and you want to place the tram on a certain spot every time on the engine. So right now, get over here so I can just show you. Right now, I'm gonna place it on this spot. I got a little mark right here that I made on the hopper. So I'm gonna place it on that spot. Then I'm gonna come over here and I am going to see where this valve is starting to open. And I see it right about, right about there. So I'm gonna take this and I am going to mark this flywheel get this right on the money here. I marked it prior, that way I wouldn't have to struggle with it during the video. But you mark, you hold your tram one end on somewhere on the hopper, it doesn't matter where, just as long as you're able to reach the flywheel. You hold it on that point that you marked here, and then you go to your flywheel, and that's where you wanna scrape it. Just scrape it a little bit with that point because you got points on the end of this tram. So you want to scrape it right there to where you can see that's one mark where the valve is getting ready to open. Now the next thing that you want to do is you want to turn the engine in the right direction. You know, they go clockwise. You want to keep turning that until that valve goes through its operation and starts to close. Once when it finishes its closing point, which is right there, the valve is completely closed now. It went open, it went closed. Again, you want to take your tram, you want to put it on that spot that you have on the hopper and mark your flywheel again. Like a, up here, you to mark your flywheel again. Now you have two marks on your flywheel. You have where it opens. I'm gonna go back forward again. You have where it opens here and where it closes here. So here's your range of operation. So now you're gonna take that string again and you're gonna go at the first mark that you made where the valve starts to open you're gonna take that string and you're gonna go all the way around till you get to where that mark is, the second mark that you made as to where the valve uh, went through its full operation and closed again. So it's a full operation of that valve. Now, you're gonna take that string and you're gonna measure that string from the end here all the way to the end. This is the range of operation. So I measured that and it came up to 34 inches. So you take that 34 inches and you divide that by that 0.15 that you came up with when you measured the full circumference of the flywheel. So 34 divided by 0.15 is 226 degrees. And as I stated earlier, your range of operation for the exhaust valve is 225 to 230 degrees. So I came up with, after doing the math of 34, measuring point to point, divided by 0 0.15, I came up with 226 degrees. So my exhaust valve operation is within 225 and 230. I came up with 226 degrees. So you can final adjust. Most of the push rods have an adjustment at the end. You can adjust that either way if you need a little bit more or a little bit less on your uh, degrees. But we got 226 degrees on this engine, so I would consider that fairly well 
uh, pretty good. So it's within that range, 225 to 230. But um, it's just a good way of seeing whether or not uh, you got the cam gear where you need it. If you can't get 225 to 230 out of your adjustment at the end of the rod, then that means that you need to move your cam gear either forward or backwards. Depends on what you need. If you need a longer duration, uh, say you came up with 225, then I believe you're gonna have to move that forward in order to get more. You'll have to move that gear one tooth or one tooth back or even two teeth, depends on what you're gonna need. But uh, if, um, if you're struggling with any of this that I'm talking about, I apologize. Uh, I try to bring up things that might uh, incite people to look into. Uh, you know, everybody likes a little bit of knowledge and I just found uh, the use of the tram as being, you know, it's an old school way of uh, figuring out things. But uh, I think for the farmer that was out on the farm needing to figure out something on his engine, you could do it with this. Uh, I do know on these, uh, on these engines, uh, exhaust valve timing is very critical. Uh, if you can get your exhaust valve timing right on the money, then uh, generally, uh, you're going to be able to get your ignition timing uh, spot on too the same way because the push rod also holds the trip lever for your uh, igniter. So if you got your push rod set right for your exhaust valve, then you, you probably have everything where it should be. Like I said, the range of operation for this one is 226 degrees uh, using the tram using the string method you know just measuring the distance between open and closed on the exhaust valve measure that and if you can come up with the with the final uh, degrees or range of operation um, trying to think of what else i need to bring up uh, I hope some of these videos that I'm making are, you know, worthwhile to some of you guys. Uh, it's it's the knowledge we gain, I think, that helps us become better at what we do, what we love to do. Um, so I'm kind of helping the newbies here, the new guys that are coming in that don't understand certain things. Uh, some of you old timers, they they probably scoff at this, but that's cool. You know, it's it's not a big deal, but I just find it interesting that uh, he used a, a simple instrument such as this. There's, I made points at the end here on each one, on each end. That way you could scrape it, make your marks. But just remember, you always have to place it on the same spot wherever you set your base mark. You have to set it at the same spot each time before you go marking your flower wheel in two places, open, close. So it's a, it's a good way of finding out what, uh, what your exhaust valve's doing. Uh, some people struggle with some of this, you know, setting their engines up, but I think uh, if we all help each other, I, I think it's a great way of doing it. But again, I, I get a lot of my information out of his book, Farm Gas Engines and Tractors. Uh, just a lot of great information in here. Everything from valves, to, uh, cooling systems, lubrication systems, um, battery ignition systems, uh, governing systems, your governors, talks about that, flyway governors. Uh, it's just really a, a really good book uh, explaining uh, a lot of the fundamentals. Uh, they go into uh, transmissions on tractors, final drives, clutches, uh, just about pretty much everything uh, that you might need on one of these uh, single cylinder throttle governed engines, uh, hit and miss engine. Uh, it talks about oilers, setting up oilers, uh, just, a, just a great, great book on uh, 
on these old engines and uh, a lot of old information that uh, people have forgotten are right here in this book. So, great book. So, hopefully this uh, was understandable for you guys uh, on how to do this. Again, you want to figure out the circumference of your flywheel measured in inches. This one is 55 inches. I measure from this point all the way around to this point again, it comes up 55 inches. I take that 55 inches and I divide that by 360. 360 degrees of the full flywheel. Divide that, I come up with 15 degrees for every inch. So every inch of this flywheel is 15 degrees. Then I take and I mark my exhaust valve where the, the push rod is just starting to push on the exhaust valve, right when it starts to push on it, which is right about, go around once, okay. Right there, right there is where the push rod is getting ready to push that exhaust valve open. I take the tram and I put it on my base mark. Always use that same base mark. And then I mark the flywheel. And what you're doing, you're just taking the tram, seeing that it's pointed, and you're just marking the flywheel, putting a, a scratch mark in it. Then you, you take the flywheel in the normal operation, which is clockwise, and watch your exhaust valve. And watch when you see your exhaust valve open, and then go back to close right when it stops. When that push rod comes off that rocker arm and that valve's no longer open anymore, it's closed, then you want to go back to your base mark and then mark your flywheel again. So now you have two marks on your flywheel. You have one here and you have one here. So you want to measure that distance from where it opened to where it closed, measure it. I used a string for measuring that. And then once you get your measurement there, then which is 34 inches on this engine was 34 inches. Now I'm gonna take that 34 inches and I'm gonna divide that by the 15 degrees per inch. And that'll tell you just how, what your range of operation is on your exhaust valve which on this engine, 34 divided by 15 is 226. So I got 226 degrees of operation in an exhaust valve. And you're supposed to have anywhere between 225 and 230. Final adjustment can be done at the end of the, uh, where the rock arm is and your push rod. There's usually an adjustment here. Some do, some don't. Um, where you can tweak that a little bit uh, get more or less to bring it either up or back. Um, if you can't get it through that adjustment, then it means you need to move your cam gear, either a tooth forward, tooth backwards, until you get that 225 to 230. Um, they claim that uh, the exhaust valve should remain open during part of the intake stroke, where the engine sucking in a new charge. You want your exhaust valve, I believe is five to 10 degrees uh, past top dead center where it stays open uh, in order to bring that new charge in and push some of that old charge out. Uh, they say these engines run a lot cooler that way. So this is a good way of setting it up to make sure your range of operation is correct. Uh, hopefully this helps you guys. Uh, hope it wasn't a boring video. Uh, I just kind of like going into different aspects of it. Uh, I try to gear all these to the beginners out there. Um, not so much the guys that have been doing this for years, but mainly for the new guys coming in because sometimes I think it's hard for them to get the right information. Uh, there's a lot of great groups out there on Facebook that uh, people uh, go to to find information and, and uh, I don't think we should frown on those trying to learn 
how to do this kind of stuff in order for this to uh, continue as a great hobby. So, but anyway, I don't want to ramble on, but hopefully this helps somebody. If you got any questions, you can uh, send me an email to uh, warrenk107 at aol.com. Uh, you can send me an email uh, if you got any questions. Uh, I have uh, Stationary Engines Worldwide group on uh, Facebook. If you go on Stationary Engines Worldwide, uh, if you want to make a comment there, uh, what you found, how you figured out the same thing that I did. Um, if you can do a little video on using the same principle, it would be great. Um, if you got any questions about it, you can question it there. Just uh, post a picture of your engine and uh, give us the questions that you might have and we'll probably be able to help you out. But anyway, um, like I said, if, if you don't understand what I just said, uh, I'll help you out. Just let me know. And I uh, appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this. Um, again, it's a great book if you guys can find it. Uh, a lot of great useful information in here. Um, it's Farm Gas Engines and Tractors by Fred Jones. Uh, he's an engineer and uh, really great information. Okay, guys. Uh, Hope you all have a good day and uh, be safe out there and get your hands greasy. Later.